Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring BFD for static routes with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right to the example. In the example, we have a few things in the topology that is, there's a few things I want to point out. There's a user at the bottom. There's VSRX1 that is connected to the internet on interfaces Gigi000 and Gigi003. And then the VSRX1 device also has a loopback interface with the IP address of 10.1.1.1. And so with this, we want to use JWeb to configure a default static route with two next hops. Now these two next hops, we don't want them to be equal. We want the Gigi000 interface to be preferred over the Gigi003 interface. So all traffic in a non-failure situation is going to be using the Gigi000 interface. That is all traffic bound for the internet. And in a failure situation where Gigi000 goes down or whatever, that path is blocked, we're going to use Gigi003, and we're going to do that by using BFD with static routes. And we're going to configure a default static route that needs a transmit interval of one half second and a receive interval of one half second. And then we want the failover to occur if two BFD hellos are missed. And so we'll examine the results and test failover after configuring that. So let's go ahead and jump to JWeb and get this going. All right, so here is the JWeb interface, and here we can Go to networking, we're under configuration, workspace, and then static routing. Now with static routes, a thing that you're gonna find out here if you try to do this is there's no options for BFD. We can see we can create a static route, we can set a next hop, but it doesn't give us an option for BFD in this exact workspace. So what we have to do is we have to go to the CLI tools and then we have to go to the point and click editor. Okay, so here is the point and click CLI editor. And here we can select the routing options, click edit, and then we can scroll down and find static, click edit. And then here we want to add a new route. So click add new entry under route. We set the destination to 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. And then we need to select, scroll down and select the add new entry under the qualified next stop. And here we can add the 10.11.11.2. And then we can set the preference to 3. Click OK. And then we need to set another qualified next stop. This is going to be the 10.12.12.2. And then we set the metric preference to 7. And then we need to configure BFD liveliness detection. Just click configure under that field. Set the minimum interval to 500. So this is going to be in milliseconds. And then we want to set the multiplier to 2. By default, the multiplier is set to 3. And so we need to set that to 2 to make sure that if 500 milliseconds goes by times 2, we do a switch over. So then we click OK. Click OK again. And then we have our next top. We can see here the, for the default route, with BFD liveliness detection configured with qualified next hops. So we can click commit now. And then we see a summary of changes, gives us a summary of what the CLI changes will be. We can click OK. And we can see success, and that's great. And so that's what we want to see. So let's go ahead, now that we have that set up, we can go to the user device and start pinging an internet host, and then we can initiate the failover and see what happens. All right, so before we jump to the user, one thing I do want to point out real quick is that we do have this configuration already done on the ISP device. And what's basically happening here, I'll walk you through this. We have a route set to the loopback address for the VSRX device. So it's a route to the loopback address that uses the qualified next hops of 10.11.11.1 and 10.12.12.1. .12 you might notice that was kind of a mirror of what we configured on the VSRX1 device with JWeb. And then we have the BFD liveliness detection configured minimum air interval of 500 milliseconds and multiplier set to two. That's perfect, that's what we want to see. So let's look at VSRX1. Now, unfortunately, there's no good way to look at the BFD statistics in JWeb. So we do have to use the CLI for that. And we see that they're both up, that's perfect. State of up, the interfaces they're using is correct. Detect time, one second. Perfect. Transmit interval, half second, 500 milliseconds. Multiplier set to two. That's what we want to see. So let's go ahead and jump back to the ISP device and disable an interface. Actually, let's get that ping going first, pinging an internet host. So let's jump back to the ISP. 
and let's go ahead and put the disable tag on the Gigi001. We see that Gigi001 is that first interface that we want to disable. Commit that. And if we jump back here, we can see that I can type right. We can see it's down. And one thing I didn't show beforehand was the route. You can see that we're using that Gigi003 interface. So let's look at the user, and the user's still going along. Doesn't look like anything was missed. So let's kill that, and we can see, yeah, there was a little bit of packet loss, and that's okay. That's expected with any sort of failover like that. It was detected within one second, but there was a bit of packet loss. And so let's go ahead and jump back and delete that disable tag and watch what happens. So let's go to VSRX1. See that both BFD sessions are up, perfect. Look at the route, we can see the static route, we're using Gigi000 again. Perfect, that's what we want to see. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning byte. We discussed how to configure BFD for static routes in the JWeb interface and demonstrated how to verify BFD for static routes. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.